Hello everybody. Today we are taking a look at this Turnbull call station. Let's go ahead and get started. So this here is a new fixture here at the workshop. So these here are actually Turnbull buttons. These aren't Epco or anything like that. And I've never actually seen these out in the field before. They are very, very light to press. You barely have to push them to make them activate. And this particular one is a rotodial. So just taking a closer look at the actual button, you'll see it's just a very basic square button. And when I push down on it, you can see that the distance that the button travels is very little. And then up here on the top, we have the rotodials. And you can see here, it goes from G up to three. So here's what it looks like on the back. So first thing you'll notice is the large roto dials, and we'll take a closer look at how these work in a little bit. And then down below are the buttons. So you'll notice here that there is a metal plate, which is the main plate. You'll notice there is a second metal piece, which is fully attached to the panel, and that actually makes this thing very heavy. However, in order to remove the parts, it's very easy. The buttons are simply clipped on with these clips, and to remove them, you just pull the clips and pop the button out. In order to take this other button out, I gotta take these rotodials off, which I'm gonna do anyway, cause they are dirty. And you'll notice up here that they, they need to be fixed cause they've been pushed in. So taking the rotodials off is pretty easy. We'll first start off by removing this little limiting piece. This simply prevents the rotodial from endlessly spinning and going crazy. The dial itself can come off and we can get a better look at the insides. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. And there's a screw back here which holds it on. This pops out, and now both of the rotodials can be removed. This reveals the hardware that holds it in. And I'm also gonna go ahead and take off the other side too, because we'll be using this to put it all back together. Now the last button can be unclipped. And here's the panel without anything on it. So first we'll look at one of the rotodials. So, well, first of all, this is you. That's all I have to say about that. So this is what you see from the front, and obviously the only thing you would see is the little lens. However, behind it, there is this large disc that rotates. On the side, you'll notice there are a bunch of holes around this disc, and you'll see here that there are these little pins in here, and when I rotate this, it hits this metal bar, limiting the rotation from G to three. Now the disc itself, you'll notice that the letters are permanently engraved into the disc. Some of the other rotodials that I've worked on, such as an Otis rotodial, have it where the numbers could be changed at some point. However, this one, it's set to whatever it was engraved with. This little lens can be taken out. Of course, it needs to be cleaned. And then, as I showed you before, we can take this little limiting piece off, and the entire piece can be removed. So this is what the inside of this dial looks like. And you'll see here there's these metal pieces all the way around along with the little shaft in the middle. So this is the base side of the roto dial. And you'll notice here there's these three pieces. However, this one will not actually work because we're missing one of the components. So let's go ahead and pull up this other one here. This one's complete. You'll notice here there are these three white things. Now these are actually electromagnets and that's the way that this indicator works. So this particular one has three coils and there are four connectors. There's the common and then one, two, three. So the common will be connected to the common and what you would do is pulse each of these pins a certain way so that it would turn the dial one number. Now unfortunately, since this one doesn't work and I'm not sure if all of these work, I'm not gonna be able to make this into a little simulator, but I am going to clean up these roto dials at least make these less dirty, get all this gunk off so that this looks a lot better. So you can you can reach on the side and still turn them. They're not gonna be electronically controlled though. So now here we have one of the buttons. So obviously this is a call station, so only two buttons. But on the back here, we first have the lamp. This is what the bulb looks like. It uses this type of base. The lamp socket can unclip from this clip here. So there appears to be two independent contacts on this button. So you have the connection point here and the connection point here. When you push in the button cap, it pushes down those metal bars, which completes the circuit onto these here. So pulling out the metal contacts, this is what one of the contacts look like. It's just this metal piece and it pushes up against this other contact. You see they're kind of dirty, so I'm glad I pulled this apart. And then there's this little plastic piece which comes out here. I'm not totally sure what that's for. And then the entire button can pop out. So here's the main frame. And then here is the button. And you can see here that the button cap just kind of pops off. And if you gently pry on the label, it also comes off. So there's the arrow, which I'm gonna clean. 
And here is the button cap. So all of these pieces just kind of sit on top of one another like that and then sit behind. However, since this is so full of gunk, I think it's time it needs a cleaning. And here are the buttons after cleaning. They definitely look a lot better and they will hopefully function a lot better because I cleaned all the contacts. So all that's really left to do is clean up the rotor dial parts and get this thing wired. So I've got some of these larger bulbs, but these will work on a nine volt battery. And what's nice about these is they are kind of large, but there's plenty of room on the back to put these. It may light up the wall a little bit when it's on the shelf, but oh well, that's just how the design is. So that will be wired up and wiring these are very simple. This is just like any old basic switch circuit. You've got one end here. So this would go to like the positive of the battery, cross the switch. You can see here, this is going to one end of the lamp. So from this in the switch to the lamp, and then this would be the negative. If you're gonna do two of them, you would just wire them together. So you would put these together here, put your positive on here. So both of these are positive and connect the same wire to the other end of the switch and then connect the two negatives together to the battery. So wiring this will be very simple. So I'm going to finish up with the restoration by cleaning up these rotor dials, then the plate, then get this thing all together and we'll see how it looks when it's done. Here is the completed panel and you can see here that it cleaned up very nicely and it looks really good now. The rotor dials are back intact and you can see I can turn them on the sides to adjust the floors and pressing the call buttons lights up the arrows and that looks really cool. And it's so shiny you can see the camera in the reflection. So I hope you enjoyed taking a look at some Turnbull call buttons. And we might be seeing these again in the future because there's a car panel that I have to work on as well. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.